Hey guys, so I promised you a bedtime story. I've got one tonight. It's kind of long. Um, but I couldn't like cut it down because if you're going to read the whole scene, read the whole scene. You know what I'm saying? Um, this comes from Close Cover. A lot of you had asked some um, stuff about some of the other books. They're not written yet, so I couldn't do a bedtime story. Um, but I, I'm really happy and excited about Close Cover and the whole um, uh, crossover event. This particular scene is from about the middle of the book. Uh, what you need to understand is that at this point in time, Lisa doesn't know Remy is her bodyguard. So Lisa's got this big thing where you don't have to, you know, read the book to to really understand it. Um, she's got a thing about being uh, smothered. So Will has hired Remy, and Remy has then started a relationship with her that, in Remy's mind, is totally separate. But that's of course going to play in later on. But right now, what you need to know is that. Remy knows he's the bodyguard. Will knows he paid for a bodyguard. Lisa doesn't know there's a bodyguard. All right, here we go. And this all play, takes place at Sanctum. Hi, everybody. Okay, and it's long. Sorry. Lisa walked out of the locker room, head held high, and ran straight into Bridget. Tell me you are not sleeping with him. Bridget was in a long see-through skirt and white bra, her round belly on display, no high heels for the pregnant chick. I heard a rumor that you signed a contract with Remy Gittry, a DS contract. Tell me it's not true. There was a hint of desperation in Bridget's voice that worried Lisa. Bridget was cool. She was the one who shrugged off most things. Well, not like someone cutting her off in traffic. Then she let the volcanic rage flow. But family shit kind of washed right off her. I don't see why that's a problem. Bridget's eyes closed. Oh, you will. I think Will is going to make a make it a big old problem. Me, personally, I get it. The man is hot, and honestly, it solves a whole bunch of problems. But Will is not going to see it that way, and he's on the protective side. He's going to explode when he hears about that contract. Maybe if you walk out now, I can convince him all it's a joke. Um, since when does Will have a say in who I date? She got it. Big Brother was protected, but she wasn't a teen. She didn't have her brother vet her dates. He'd been weirded out when she took the training class, but he hadn't tried to stop her. When she'd started playing, he'd gone a little green, but worked on a schedule rather than telling her to go somewhere else. Look, Bridge, it's not even a long-term thing. Remy's going home in a couple of weeks. I'm not going to hide the whole time. Bridget took her hand. Is Remy waiting for you up in the lounge? Yes. Before she could say another word, Bridget was hauling her up the stairs that led to the swanky lounge and the primary play space. To her left, she could see someone already had a sub on the hamster wheel. Hopefully, Remy didn't decide that she needed cardio. That hamster wheel was the only punishment she actually feared at Sanctum. It took a lot of energy to turn that sucker green. Why is this upsetting? Lisa struggled to keep up. Why does Will care about who I date? It's not like he's some ex-con without a job who sits on my couch and cheats on me all day. He's a good guy. I know he is. He's done a lot for our family. I'm surprised he would decide to start a relationship with you when he knows it's not going to work. I think Will is worried that you shouldn't be dating anyone right now, Bridget replied. Thank God. Laura was suddenly rushing over from the bar. She was dressed for play, her corset a lovely purple with a matching thong. Ah, family life. They were having a family crisis in the middle of a BDSM club. It was perfect. Mitch and Will are on their way up, and they know. They know. Someone told them in the locker room. The look on Laurel's face didn't make a lick of sense. Stop. First of all, is Lila going to drop from the ceiling to put her two cents in? And second, since when do we treat my dating life like it's a highly classified thing and we'll all get in trouble if the guys know? Remy looked up from where he'd been sitting at the bar and she'd see him near melted at the look on his face. His eyes were like lasers focused in on her. He stood up, his big body encased in leathers and cow his cowboy boots. She could see the wide swath of his chest where the vest didn't cover. He was all muscle, all man, and it didn't matter that she'd already had him ten times. She wasn't ever going to get tired of the way it felt when he looked at her like he couldn't get enough. Whoa, Bridget said. I know that look. That look is bad. That look is something you don't come back from. She was going to ask her suddenly insane sister-in-law what she meant by that, but Remy had closed the space between them. He reached out and took her hand in his, bringing it to his lips. Okay, this is the part where he speaks French, and I don't. So, it's a lot of French stuff. Tu es la flouche, belle femme. It's like, 
It's like you're the prettiest girl in the club, my shrimp, because he calls her shrimp for You'll find out. So um, then more French. She had no idea what he was saying, but it made her girl parts pulse. Well, and Bridget, I'm sure Ryan's going to do that French really well one day. I'm just saying. Um, Laura and Bridget were watching him, too, their eyes wide, like neither could think of what he what to say after that. If you're done speaking douchebag, perhaps we should talk about what the hell you're doing sleeping with my sister, a dark voice said. Did you think I wouldn't realize, notice that? She turned her body in front of Remy, putting her body in front of Remy's, and saw Will wince, probably because her boobs looked really good in that corset. Her brother stood there with Mitch, both in leather similar to Remy's, though neither could fill them out the way hers could. And it was weird. He was right. It was creepy and weird to see her brother dress for sex because she wasn't sure she was ready to accept that he had sex. Even though he was working on baby number two and Bridget freely talked about their sex life, it was easier to pretend like Bridget was talking about one of her crazy characters instead of her brother when she he wasn't standing there in front of her. Um, it's French and not douchebag, Remy said. Uh, that's what Tag speaks when he starts talking about programmers and getting his manis in a wad. French is a perfectly civilized language. So is the law, buddy, and you're going to understand that when I sue your ass, Mitch said. Mitchell! Laura managed to make her husband's name an admonition. Why would you sue Remy for sleeping with me? I'm going to tell you, I'll be a very bad witness because I'll go into ridiculously explicit detail about how good he is at it, Lisa swore. Everyone was watching them. Big Tag had Charlotte in his lap on the lounge in the lounge. It looked like he'd been talking to Alex McKay and Liam O'Donnell, and now all eyes were on the Daly family as they hashed out their issues in public. They weren't alone. Simon Weston and his wife Chelsea had been sitting with Jesse and Phoebe Murdoch, and there was no way to miss how the two couples were avidly watching the scene in front of them. Jesse even asked Simon to pass him a bowl of mixed nuts. Damn it, they couldn't have done this at home like normal people? Really? You think you know him? Her brother had his best judgy face on. It was the one he'd used on her when she'd come home late from dates or gotten a B on a test. I don't think you know all the facts, Lisa. Remy's hand came down on her shoulders. I don't think you know all the facts, Will. First of all, your sister is a beautiful, highly competent woman who's capable of taking care of herself. But she's been struggling, and everyone needs a little help now and then. Yeah, not the kind you're offering her, Will shot back. Exactly how is your dick helping her? Mitch asked, which probably got him an elbowing from his wife. Remy continued like Will and Mitch hadn't said a thing. I'm going to admit, I didn't think I had anything to offer her until we met up again a few days ago. As many people in this club know, I stayed away despite my attraction to her for exactly that reason. But things changed recently. I moved into her building while my house was getting ready to go on the market. Some of my friends helped me move, and we, well, I took them out for drinks at Cherry Pies. Not the best establishment, but you know my boy, you know how boys my boys will be boys. I was surprised to find Lisa working there. She went completely still. He had to mention that. Will's eyes widened. I'm sorry, what? Ch cherry pies? Bridget asked with a look that let Lisa knew she understood exactly what the business was about. Yeah, she hadn't planned on mentioning her one day job at the strip club to her overprotective family. She'd been planning on hiding that altogether. It was an experiment. The guy who manages the place lives at my building and he offered me a job. It didn't work out, no biggie. What is cherry pies? Laurel asked, looking from Lisa to Mitch to Will. Is it a pie shop? Bridget sent Laurel a sympathetic look of sweetie. You're lucky you're gorgeous. I do believe cherry pies refers to a woman's virginity. You know, I got me some of that sweet, sweet cherry pie. Will looked down at her. No one talks like that. Tell that to Warren and much of the 80s hair metal movement, and then you can explain why a strip club calls itself cherry pies. Bridget shot back. You know, it's really false advertising, Mitch pointed out. His eyes had gone a bit soft. A sure sign he was either thinking about his family or amusing about a class action lawsuit. I'm going to bet there's not a single virgin in the place. Well, no females. Will seemed to know it was time to take control. I don't care about virgins. I care about why my sister was dropping her freaking clothes. He went a bit pale. Holy shit. How did this happen? One job. I had one job. Oh, God. He's going to talk about the pole. Bridge had her hands on Will's arm, stroking him. This baby is a girl, and he fears the pole more than anything. I wasn't on the pole. She was absolutely certain she'd gone beat red. Remy, please tell them I wasn't on the pole. 
So she was behind the bar where the topless waitresses hang out, Remy explained helpfully. Apparently, they worked her eight hours without a break, and when I found her, she was being accosted by a heinous drunk who ended up causing her to fall into the cold buffet. They proceeded to shoot glitter so hard out of the venting system that she still got a little glow about her, even though we scrubbed her fully a couple of times. Mitch, some of that could have gotten into her lungs. There's your lawsuit. Anyway... When I got a hold of her again, she was walking to the train station because she turned her car in months ago and didn't tell you. She preferred to turn it in rather than allow it to be repossessed. Your sister was walking down the street, clutching 41s to her chest like they were her lifeboat, and she was covered in glitter that was shown in the moonlight like a bat signal for rapists or other criminals. She turned to her lover, her fist at her side. You are not helping the situation. Remy managed to look as innocent as a 200-pound ex-soldier could look. I'm explaining the situation to your brother. I'm explaining how I'm not the bad guy here. I'm the guy who picked you up and put you in my truck. I'm the guy who fed you that night and got you a new job the next morning. I'm the guy who drops you off and picks you up and makes sure you're safe and happy because I'm the guy you chose. I'm still stuck on the fact that Cherry Pies has a cold buffet, Bridget said. Was there shrimp? I don't want to talk about shrimp, Lisa said with a shudder. She might never look at a crustacean again. Sorry, I'm kind of hungry. Pregnancy cravings. Bridget looked up. We're not going to a strip club for shrimp. We are civilized. We will find a Long John Silver's. We'll turn to Lisa. You turned in your car? She hated that. She hated everything about this. The pity in her brother's eyes was far worse than losing her car. Lila would never be in this position. Laura would have figured a way out. Only Lisa was the loser in the family. She was the only one who hadn't known what she wanted to do with her life. The last to make it through college. The first to fail. I couldn't afford it. That's no excuse, Laura replied. She knew she was in for a lecture. Remy moved to her side. No excuse. Her pride is no excuse. If you'd been in the same situation as Lisa, would you have turned to your sister-in-law and asked her to pay for your car? I don't think so. Laurel shook her head. He wouldn't. I wouldn't. Well, you raised us to be proud and not live beyond our means. We're, we married really wealthy people. We don't have to worry about money. Lisa's not in the same boat as the two of us. Well, I would have paid for the car, Bridget said. That's not the point. Laura held her hand as though trying to give her strength. Lisa wants to make it on her own. You taught her that well. Will's jaw tightened and he looked, he eyed Remy. She let him help her. I'm sleeping with him. He should help me. Not for the simple fact that I'm sleeping with him, but because he cares about me. And he's not handing over cash. He helped me get a job. He bought food and I cooked it. It's a more even exchange. She looked at her brother. He was way more like a father when she thought about it. He'd had a hard burden at a young age and handled himself with grace, more grace, with grace that most teenage boys wouldn't have had. He'd kept them all together. But he needed to understand that she made her decisions now. Look, well, I love you, but I'm a grown woman who makes her own choices. And I'm choosing to be with Remy for now. You don't have all the facts, Will said, his voice tight. Will, please think about this for two seconds, Bridget warned. Do you want to start a war over this? Because that's what happens if you force her to choose. Believe me, I know what a family looks like after that. She might choose her family, but your relationship with her will never be the same. And she'll be far more likely to rebel than you could imagine. Think about everything that's at stake. There was some weird subtext going on that she didn't understand, but Bridget and Will could be like that at times. They had a whole shorthand no one else got. Will, I've been open and honest with her about how long I'm going to be in town and what I can offer while I'm here, Remy said quietly. I've been attracted to your sister, well, since the moment I saw her. I stayed away because I didn't think I was good for her. But we sat down and talked, and I can give her something for these weeks. I can give her my full attention and my full promise to be present every second I have to spend with her. We signed a contract with an end date, and we're both going into this knowing that it will end and agreeing to be friends afterwards. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life, Will said. A contract with an end date? Who does that? Bridget's eyes went wide. Like supervillain, she could kill you with lasers from her irises wide. And everyone took a step back. Even Remy seemed to know Hurricane Bridget was about to get her storm on. Remy's eyes went around Lisa as though he could protect her from the coming winds. Will had the good sense to turn pale. Now, baby, I wasn't talking about us. That was a totally different thing. Totally. Bridget pointed a finger his way. Signing a contract with an end date is stupid? Is it, Will? Is it? Because you are calling the mother of your baby stupid, mister. I don't know what word love means, so let's take it real slow. Hey, wait. The sex is pretty good. We can go another month. But stop using the love word. I love you, baby. Will said I love you so much. See how trainable I was? You recognize that right away. Trainable. 
I don't think he's trainable. Trainable, my ass. Bridget shot back before she looked over at Remy. If you hurt her, I will skin you alive, and I will sew the skin back on and let it heal and skin you again just for the fun of it. Do I make myself clear? In a very intense way, Mrs. Daly, Remy said from behind her. I have no intention of hurting Lisa. I genuinely care about her. I intend to protect her and take care of her until I have to go home to my family. Bridget studied him for a moment and then looked over at Laurel, and the two of them seemed to come, some, come to some kind of decision. He's just a dumbass, they said at the same time. Laurel gave him a grin. It's all right. We married dumbasses. Dumbassery can be cured. Mitch put a hand on Remy's arm, usually with pregnancy. You want to keep your dumbassery? Wear a condom, brother. I thought we were sticking together as the men of this family, Will said, sent his best friend a dirty look. Mitch slung an arm around Laurel. I think the ladies are right. He thinks this is going to go one way, but it's going to swerve, brother. It's going to swerve hard. And that's when you wake up and suddenly there's a kid in your arms and she's got a ring on her finger. And you just kind of scratch your head and wonder how you got there. But then you figure out there is really fucking nice. There is happy and warm and good. And suddenly all those reasons you limited the contract in the first place seem fuzzy and vague and you kind of give in. I give him three weeks. Will's eyes narrowed, seeming to fixate on that place where Remy's hands touched her. I'll take that. He looks even more dumbassy than you did five weeks before they eloped. So that is how the dailies throw down. Um, and that is your bedtime story for this evening. I did not see any of the comments that flew by because I was busy looking at this. And I'm about to go out for the first time in forever and eat food I did not actually like on show. So I will answer all of your questions when I get back. Uh, have a nice night.